Ezekiel 44 verse 17 and it came to pass that when they entered in at the gate of the inner court they should be clothed with linen garments this is the priest no wool shall come upon them now wool will cause you to sweat also I don't know what would have to but wool comes from sheep while they minister in the gates of the inner court and within so there is a strict clothing for the priest and today's church which I keep bringing it back today church, very very lenient on what the dress codes are I don't care you're in Florida you don't need to be wearing shorts unless it's a medical condition in church it shows due lack of respect to God they shall have linen bonnets upon their heads these are the priest's sons and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. This goes all the way back to Exodus. The law is back from the millennia on. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. There is the wool. What is sweat? It's the result of the curse of Adam for disobeying the Word of God. And when they go forth into the outer court, even into the outer court to the people, they shall put off their garments where they ministered and lay them in the holy chambers, and they shall put on other garments. And they shall not sanct they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. So there's a putting off and putting off in a proper place. And they say clothing makes a man. The clothes don't sanctify the people. I said this once before and I got a preacher mad as anything at me. I said some of the biggest crooks I know wear a suit. Well, you know, you're making fun of the ministry. Bingo! Because one of the biggest crooks of, that wear suits and ties are ministers. And they're their hymn and their thing, cash, check, or money order. They'll lie to the people. As much as a politician. There are careers known that people in them, not all, but there are people in that career, they are liars, cheats, and deceivers. And I'm sorry to say, but it's the truth. I'm to speak the truth. It includes the ministry. When I entered my seminary, my, my institute, I had to, I don't know if I, I don't know if it was with me, but I had to explain to him why I wanted to go to the institute and why I am not looking to the ministry, you know, because it's easy money. You know, I preach a, a message on Sunday morning and I don't do nothing else for the rest of the week. Which there are people who believe that, and there are people who do that. Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. 
They shall only pull their heads. So when it comes to the hair, the priest, not too short, not too long. What's long? Shoulders. What's too short? L listen, the Bible says you can be bald and be clean. Leviticus. But don't make yourself bald. Why? Because there is a practice among Halloween activity. And when I mean Halloween, I mean for the dead. When people die, they would shave their heads. And God says, I don't want you... What Paul says in the New Testament, abstain from all appearance of evil. So the number one symbol of death and tattoos is a skull, and it never has hair. Ask 100 men who have tattoos of a skull and crossbones, whatever it be, and the Jolly Ranger flags and all that. Look, okay, find me a skull that has hair. Now, maybe, maybe you do find one, maybe blonde hair of a, of a woman. But did you read about those locust horses in the tribulation period? With their tails? You got to watch out for them horses. I know somebody I, I knew well, and I, I, I was going to get behind a horse. He goes, no, no, don't you do that. I said, what? What did I do? I didn't know nothing. Because you never get behind a horse. Why? Because they'll kick you. That's it. You're my friend no more. And ask a horse of mute. No, no, I don't have anything. To, if you want to kick me for doing nothing. So you have to have, or they have to have their hair right. Does not nature tell yourself that uh, long hair is against nature? Nothing more than ironic and stupidity to have a man bun. That's not Christian. According to the Bible. If your hair is long enough, mister, to put in a bun, it's time to cut it. Absalom had long flowing hair that was heavy upon his head and everybody loved him. And he's also a type of antichrist. As a man, I'm not saying he is, but Donald Trump has that hair of a oh, flowing man hair. I ain't saying Donald Trump is not. I'm just saying that's when I see a man with a man bun, there's one thing I want to do. Scissors. And don't you tell me, because my father had his hair done in a little ponytail. And me and another Christian said, hey, you want to get together and cut it? <laughs> and that wouldn't be right, but yeah. Neither shall any priest, any priest. Does that include Revelation chapter 1? Drink wine. When they enter the inner court. Now see, you know, there it is. It didn't say you don't you can't drink wine all the time. This is when you're gonna go into the service. You don't have wine on you. But wine it was the staple back then. And being wine, it doesn't have to be an alcoholic beverage, it could be just grape juice. Because grape juice is a type of blood. And you don't have to have any of that on your breath. Neither shall, now notice the neither shall for the priest. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow. They can't take a woman whose husband died. Look, we get a little bit more, but nor her that is put away, divorce. I know many Christians 
that have gotten married to a man or to a woman that were divorced. Me included. But I'm not an Old Testament priest. I know, man. Hey, the works, the works. You know, you almost <laughs> you got the Baptist hell for this for his ministry of the divorce and all that, and his marriage was so is so great and all that. And I learned that about half the congregation that is under him are divor were divorced and remarried. But they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel, and the law would even prescribe more a Levite. And I would probably assume not just a Levite, but also because Levites were divided into three families. Gershom. Well, there was the I would even probably say into that family. Or a widow that had a priest before. So he can marry a woman who is a widow if her husband was a priest. Now, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. The priests were only the sons of Aaron. You could have Levites filling the water. You could have Levites bringing the food. You can have the Levites helping the man bringing his ox to the to the tie up at the horn. You can have a Levite get the flour and what's need for the bread. You can have a Levite get and make the oil for the candlestick. But there were only the priests that could do the service of the brazen altar. Of the brazen labor, the holy place, and only the high priest, the most holy place. All right, now here's a problem. They shall teach my people the difference between holy and profane. That's not your Baptist churches, many of them today. When they are teaching false doctrines, they are t teaching false things. When they got it wrong, it's not according to the scripture. It's the wrong scripture. That's profane. And that verse can go to the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because if you are teaching profane, you are a false prophet, or you are a false teacher. Then cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. That's my ministry. Easter is pagan, it's unclean. Christmas is pagan, it's unclean. You want me to name names of pastors, of churches, Baptists, that will say, no, it's not. Let me give you the names. And with those names, I say it's okay to have a wrong pagan holidays. And I go to my go to my website. I will give you the documented fact. I got videos after videos and now PowerPoint. To show to you it is not Christian, it is pagan, it is African, it is Roman Catholic, it is Catholic, it is Babylonian. And if you are going to teach those two things are okay, you are profane, you are unclean, and you tell your pastor that Stiley said it's unclean, I will give him my business card with my website address on it, and he can go look it up himself. You are not in the right. In controversy. And this thing today. 
Well, you know, COVID is not real. It's it's false news. It's not real. You don't have to worry about COVID. Really? You want to tell all my friends at church that got it? At least every week in my church during prayer on Wednesday night, we are learning about somebody new or a new family. I mean, new as in been diagnosed with COVID. And now the thing is, you know, if you get the vaccine, it's going to kill you. Now if you get the both the, the booster, it's going to kill you. I had my booster today. If I'm here next week, probably hopefully we'll be in Daniel. I misproved you wrong that the, the vaccine, the boosters are going to kill you. Now it does kill some. It will have effects on some, but that's it's called side effects. It's called allergies. And the only problem with that is when they give you the shot like they did for me today, they ask you about allergies. But this is a brand new shot. If I die today or tomorrow or next week from this, it might be because my body had an adverse reaction. And not the booster shot. But there are Christians out there, and I and I know that they preach on the street and they, they preach the gospel, and then they got this saying, you know, it's the mark of the beast. Who cares if it even was? People's heads are falling off, you know, they're, whatever the nonsense is, because to me it's all nonsense. And then I don't think the boosters are, well, actually, they think. The government said it gets it. Well, I'm losing my freedoms. I'm losing my. I'm not going to lose my rights over the vaccine. I'll quit my job. The Bible says you're to obey the government. You're to obey the powers that be because God ordained them. They are God's ministers. And when you go against the government and you go against the president of the United States, who cares what denomination, Republican, Democrat, you are going against the very word of God. You have sinned. Holding profane, unclean, and clean. Oh, here he goes. He's going to park on this one. You know what's holy? You know what's clean? The King James only. You know what's profane and unclean? That man that came up to me, the Amplified Bible, the NIV, the ESV, the PDQ. You are stupid old. The Living Bible. Any Bible that is of any eye. That's Egypt. God's people don't belong in Egypt. That is of Westcott and Hort. That is of origin. That is of the Catholic Church. That is of Codex Sinaiticus and Codex Vaticanus. Any your Bible comes from that tree. It is unclean. It is profane. You have sinned. And if you read it to your congregation, if you read it to another Christian, if you get involved in it, you are profane. You are unclean. You tell that person style he said it. And that person already probably knows already, I know style he said that. You don't need to tell me. I've got enough people to come up and tell me. You know, Stalin's only King James. You know, Stalin had the nerve to say that there is only one in it, one in it, one word of God. It came out of heaven. <laughs> yeah, the King James 1611 Bible. And he said, our Bible is of Satan and hell. You left hell out. Okay. I can go on. I can start from the very first church I was in and work my way all the way up with holy and profane and unclean and clean. Clicks in the church. Pastors click and they're put into office because they know the pastor. Ooh, pat him on the back, tap his jack. You're going to get nothing to judge the seat of Christ. Salvation. Let's say this prayer just come to this altar. I think the way of salvation, not the way of holiness and clean. 
in controversy, they shall stand in judgment. All right. Ready? This, this will go to your Americans and your Baptists and your American Baptists. I didn't put Baptists first. No, it's that. All right. This goes to your American. This goes to your Baptist. This goes to your American Baptist. You're going to hate this. I don't like church and state. Oh, it's kind of funny because the Old Testament is built upon church and state. God is the extreme, ex, ex, supreme authority of Israel. Well, we're going to have no king. We're going to have... Well, God ain't a president. God is king. It's amazing for our Christians to say, you know, Jesus, my king, my king, Jesus, king of Jesus, king Jesus. And in your nation says, we don't want no king. We want a president. Do you know who he's talking about the judgments here? You know who the judges are in verse 24? Well, you see in America, we vote for judges. In Connecticut, we didn't vote for judges. <laughs> I found that quite shocking when I came down to Florida and I was talking to the past. I said, what is this thing about judges running? He goes, oh, we vote for them down here. I said, we don't vote for them in Connecticut. They're appointed. He goes, what? I said, the judges in Connecticut are appointed. We don't vote for them. You know who the judges here are? They're the priests. That's church and state. That's the priests involved with the religious activities of God, Jehovah, entering into the court. And say, okay, I'll hear you, okay. Wait a minute. Weren't you the guy that took my bullock and slayed him? Yeah. Today I'm the judge. Samuel was a judge, and he was a priest. And no one cried, church and mistake, church and mistake. So Christian, American, Baptist, when you go into the millennium, if you go into the millennium, don't be too shocked if you run to a church state system under King Jesus. In controversy, they, the priests, 22, 21, 22, 23, shall, shall stand in judgment. And they shall judge it according to my judgments. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all my assemblies. They shall hallow my Sabbath. Which, why they're in trouble or been in trouble, because they not hallowed the Sabbath. So the priests... The religious leaders of Israel who are also in charge of the government are going to judge the people. And they have to tell you what is holy, what's profane, what is unclean, what is not clean. And then they're going to judge you. They have to know the law of God to do that job. Eli's boys didn't know that. And God took them out. We are in a very sick and deadly church age period with COVID and other things. We are a, a nation of Baptists, Christians, and we are sick. And one of the causes of the sickness is we partake of the Lord's Supper and we don't, we just, okay, we're just going to do it. When the Bible says we're supposed to memory, remember what Christ has done for it and look to his coming, we are to treat that Lord's Supper with respect. 
And I sat in a church one time where, you know, you, you can pick out a hymn and nobody knows the hymn. <laughs> There's consequences for sinning against God. There's consequences for the priest who don't know what God expects from them and from the people, and there's consequences for the Christian who's supposed to know what God says, study and show thyself for proof unto God, be ready to give an answer to those that hope. And you don't. And you won't study. You're in trouble. And in the Old Testament and the millennium to come, you're also going to have to keep the Sabbath. When Ezra and Nehemiah came back in the land and built the, the, the temple and they built the, the city walls, they were going about again working on the Sabbath and Nehemiah was like, whoa, wait a minute. We ain't going to fall again. And then they closed the gates, and Nehemiah's like, if you lodge outside these gates again, I'm going to take care of you. And Nehemiah was so serious, they did not lodge without the gates anymore. Now, when Jesus came, they took it too serious. They, 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 they're taking kernels of wheat and rubbing it in their hands, and they're, oh, they're working on the Sabbath. Sabbath violation, Sabbath violation. You know what got me with the Sabbath violation? Jesus would say something. You know, whether it be healed, devil, whatever. He didn't do nothing. He just said, Thy faith restored thee. And they would be healed. And, and then, oh, Sabbath violation. What Sabbath violation? Jesus didn't do no work to heal him. Maybe a couple times he told him, take up your cot, take up your bed and walk. All right, maybe that would have been a Sabbath. The Jews had that problem with the seven-day rest. And from, from what I know, I know very little, the Jews are hard workers and they want to work, they want to work, they want to work, they want. And if there was eight days, they worked the eighth day. That, that's my conduct I'm getting through the Bible, the Sabbath. They want to work. And they caught a man picking up sticks, and God said, that's, you got to take care of him. They shall come to no dead person to defile themselves. All right, so someone died, you, you did not go to the funeral. You did not go to the wake. You did not go to their house. But for father or for mother or for son or for daughter or for brother or for sister that they had no husband. They made the final sin. So if your sister dies and she is married, don't you go. You see the marriage relationship right there? Girl gets married to her husband, and they get the first one, and she goes running off to mama, mommy. That ain't your family no more. That family's your husband. And if you're married, even your brother, the priest, hey, if you died, he's not coming. Can't. I don't go to Roman Catholic weddings. I don't go to Roman Catholic funerals. Well, there's been some. Because I know at that they're going to do the Mass. And I ain't had nothing to do with that Mass, including Christmas. Oh, he won't do Christmas. Oh, I won't do a lot of things Catholic. Because I spent 18 years as a Roman Catholic Polish. I've been saved over 35 years now. 
is a saved, born again, Bible, Christian, set free, liberty. And I don't want to do anything that displeases my Lord or gives him a sour name. I wouldn't even go potty in a late night, early morning bar. I'd rather go off in the bushes. But God provided another way for me. And after he is cleansed, they shall reckon unto him seven days. And in the day that he goeth into the sanctuary, into the inner court, to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offering in the millennium, save the Lord God. I would think it's, I just came to thought. This is free, you don't have to pay for it. It'd be great if at the great white throne judgment, Jesus be there. Catholics being judged. Woman, come here. Yes, son. You want to tell him about you're the queen of heaven and I am. You want to set them straight before I cast them off into hell? Yes, sir. It comes down to this, Catholic. My very last words for John chapter 4 Whatsoever my son saith, do it. That's the only thing I ever said after that. Nothing. You didn't see me in your toes. You didn't see me in a tree. You didn't see me with the crown of my head. I can't save you. You don't have my son as your savior. Bye bye. See you all in the hell. Because I can't save you. All the years Christians have said, Mary can't save you. Maybe Mary will step up to the plate and say, I can't save you. Sorry. Because Mary, according to Leviticus chapter 12, brought a sin offering of turtle doves. It shall be unto them for an inheritance. They don't get a land inheritance, the Levites. God is their inheritance. I am their inheritance. See, God said it. And ye shall give them no possession, meaning land, in Israel. But they have the holy land of the, of the temple. God says that's their store. That's their inheritance. And then God says, I am their possession. They shall eat the meat offerings, according to Leviticus, and the sin offering. And the trespasser, that's the best. That's the best meat. That's the best uh, grains. Every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. So everything that comes to that altar goes to the Levites, the priests. And the first of all the first fruits, all things. Oh, come on, why don't you teach that tithing? In the Baptist, we're going to run to Malachi and let God fill your barns and not give 10% for your income, and you're going to fight between net and growth, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Pastor, yes, I, my Dalmatian, you know, there was another dog in the neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. She just gave birth to puppies. Okay, yeah. Oh, well, she had 10 puppies. Here's one. Well, I don't want that. You said tithing. I can see you now. Uh, what, what, what's that monster cheese? That stinky cheese? You know, Pastor, I went to the store and I got this. I love this cheese. People, but you know, I got 10 of them. One is your cute. No, that goes 10%. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm 
Ten percent meant everything. You know what the rod? They would have the sheep walk in a line. You go one, two, three, four. Probably didn't fall asleep. The tenth one, they they marked that sheep. That was God's sheep. That's the one that went to the temple. One, two, three. Tenth one again. That one goes. Your fish had babies. Your pastor's got fish. But that, oh, oh, okay. So you only want tithe of money. And then again, on the other hand, what Baptist does that? Oh, well, I tithe and give offerings. How many cucumbers did you bring for the people in church? None. How many did you get? Oh, man, we got a whole bunch of them. Uh, every tenth, if you tithe, every tenth, cucumber. Every twentieth, if you're tomatoes. Come on. I, 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 my, you're tithing. I tithe. No, you don't. Your groceries. You bring groceries in your house. You tithe your groceries. 10% goes. There are people, Christians, going to heaven, spent more money on their dog or their cat than they do for missionaries. Many pastors out there who love the Lord and are trying to do right are starving to death because the congregation ain't faithful. And they, oh, we tired. Yeah, and why is your pastor starving? You're supposed to get the best. Did not Paul say, I mean, the oxen travels out the corn, he gets. Let's talk about pastors. Of every sort of your oblation, every sort, whatever is 10%, whatever is the first. You got season opener tickets to your ball game. Did you give them to your pastor? That's the first. I know people out there, whatever, they got to have the first. You give it to the Lord. I don't do that. I ain't going to brag about doing that. I don't do it. Shall be the priest. That's Old Testament. But then I've heard preachers go to Revelation. Oh, we're priests and kings. Okay. <laughs> you shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough. You got people today don't even know what dough is besides money. Not probably that's taken out. I bet you some preachers got up, you're gonna get the first of your dough, and he'll be saying money. Taking it out of context. I guarantee some preachers use this for, for money. That he may cause the blessing to rest in thy house. That's Malachi. So, according to that verse, if we take that verse to the Christian, to the Baptist church today, and Malachi, then Paul is an ultimate failure. At the death of Paul, he says, give me a couple of parchments and some of those books, and that's it, and a cloak. While I sit here in jail. And the very same man, Paul, in Acts, says something to the fact that I have not refrained of preaching the gospel to anybody. That, mean, that, that guy in one of his books, one of his epistles, says, those of Caesar's household, or Herod's household, Caesar or Herod's household, says hello to you. That man is working out of the castle, out of the, out of the home of the Roman government, and he's got people in there who, hey, 
You write a letter to tell them I say hello, and things are going well here. There'd be prisoners that would be strapped, handcuffed to Paul, and be like, you know about Jesus? And that guy ain't getting up leaving. I let my light shine. And how many of you, have, how many people of you in your life have come to Jesus Christ as their Savior? And not one person has ever told me one, two, three. I suppose the Apostle John was a failure. He ended up on the island Patmos and well, not much riches there. Oh, you're going to apply that, that verse to Olstein and all those other deceivers. We're thinking that riches is godliness. You want a church down south that, that, that preaches here this down south of me in Florida? Whose very church name belongs underwater? He preaches uh, at least twice a year. He preaches out of the mouth. God given time. We got tithe offering month and love lifted me. <laughs> And there was no truth in that church. Instead of crossing the River Jordan, he sunk in the River Jordan. But if you're going to name tithing offering, and God will bless you, God will do wonders for you. You're in the Old Testament. You're in Ezekiel. You're in Malachi's the Old Testament. That's the law. That's not Christian. I had a preacher telling me, you know, what were we? There are Christians in the Old Testament. I said, listen, Acts is the first time they're called Christians. Well, that's, you know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can see you're a real ox. What do you mean? That BS you're giving me. Dolly, when I said that. Knee deep and getting thicker. We're not called to be blessed with what we do for Christ. We are called to carry a sword and to be all they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Church of Thessalonica was the heaviest persecuted church. That Paul wrote to. Paul wrote to Christians. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Boy, I know what that verse means. You want me to give you the name of churches I've been in? And you can ask all the Christians. I guarantee 90 to 95% of those Christians will give you a bad reputation about me. They'll say something bad about me, and it'll be really untrue, but it's true. Well, what do you mean? I'm wild and eccentric and all. I ain't rich, but I'm blessed. My riches are in heaven. Right now in this earth, all I, there's one thing I want from God. And that would bring me great ultimate happiness. And it's not money. It's not fame. It's not riches. It's not glory. God is well taken care of me. I got a house full of food. I got a house. There are many Christians in the third world. They, they don't have a house. The priest shall not eat. Of anything that's dead of itself. This, what he does to tell my daughter. The other day I know a guy in church. And he, he, he eat roadkill. He liked it. He knew how to do it.
But it said died of itself. I don't know. I don't know. Roadkill. But what? Or torn. Whether it be fowl or beast. Because under the Jewish law, that, that dead body had to be drained of its blood properly. And there's a proper kosher way still active in 2022 on how to kill an animal and get all the blood out so that food can be kosher. And it ain't kosher, it ain't lawful, and then you're in violation of a law, but we're not under the law. But even that thing right there, James says at the, at the council in Jerusalem, as far as these Christian Gentiles, anything strangled. Christians are still under grace forbidden to eat blood. That's one of them laws that before the law, during the law, and after the law, and in the millennium. You got to rightly divide the Bible. Or some idiot will build an ark in the United States and say it's biblical. I know. Take a number. Stand in line. Now serving number 15. Number 15, come up with your break and complain. Plain and simple. <laughs>